Sorry, that's not the whole of the check. Hello, good afternoon. Yes, two. Okay. Yeah, hello, students. Good afternoon. Welcome to this afternoon's lesson. Um, Clinton, Hanifa, Rikaya, should you be in this class? Haber. All right, if, if you're all ready and set to go, just can I get some sign that you're present and ready to go? Quite a number of you, um, I think I'm, um, well, meeting here for the first time. Clinton, this should be your first lesson, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, Rika, you're welcome. This is your first online lesson. Okay, Rika and Clinton, this is your first online literature lesson. Um, Kabir also, not sure if Kabir was in the last class. Yeah, Nifa has been present in a couple of our classes. Okay, all right. All right, Rika, um, this is your first, all right. Um, Clinton, what about you? Okay, now what I'm asking all of this is so that everyone can be on the same page. It's important that we have a few understanding of what exactly we are doing so that no one is left behind. Now is Clinton still with us? So far we have Clinton and Ifa and uh, Wika, yeah. We're going to round off, we're supposed to round off with uh, um, work on the poem we're considering, but so that the others can be brought up to speed or do a brief recap. Now, for the past few lessons, we've been studying the poem, The Leader and the Lead. I remember Clinton and some of the others were given theirs before the break, a copy of the book. They gave me a copy of the poem before the break, and we're supposed to study to do some um, assignments, and then okay. So the poem is "The Leader and the Lead" by Neil Shundari. 
from the title of the poem, you can get a fair idea of what to expect. We should um, expect to see something that refers to leadership, the followership, what it takes to be a leader, uh, and why a leader is even needed in the first place. So we went through a couple of um, what you've seen on the slide. Now, this is the poem. For those of you who don't have a copy of the poem, you can either take a snapshot or screenshot of um, this current slide, or you try to get your hands on the poem online. From the beginning of the poem, we are brought face to face with the quest for leadership. The lion takes his claim. He sees leadership as his exclusive preserve, it means that for the lion, leading the rest of the pack is his right. Probably because, uh, well, maybe his father was um, the leader, or he feels because of his. Um, heavy mane or his majestic walk, he had earned the right to be the leader of the pack. But many animals, such as the antelope, don't agree because they very well remember the ferocious pounce of the sport. Now, the thing with this poem is, as we saw for um, the rest of the lessons after the introductory class, there are a whole lot of words that help us imagine a forest um, scene, um, animals in the natural habitat, and so on. And that's because of the use of certain descriptive words, adjectives, that the writer has used to help create certain images in our minds. So from the beginning of the poem in the first line, the lion, the hyena, the giraffe, the zebra, the elephant, and so on, all come forward to ask to be the leader of the rest of the animals, the leader of the pack of animals, the animal kingdom, however you want to put it. But the, there was always a counterclaim. There was always a reason why those animals weren't qualified to rule. For the lion, his um, pounds, the pounce of his paws are so ferocious. He had that fearful and um, dangerous look to his paws. For the hyena, had a little appetite. The giraffe, a uh, very long neck, something that maybe would have been his, um, should I say, most significant feature, ended up, um, ended up working against him because the animals felt that his eyes were too far from the ground. Now for the zebra, his black and white stripes. Uh, no, we don't want to. We are a duplicitous fellow. We do not know if we can really trust you because of how you look. Now the elephant was seen as being too powerful or too mighty to be the leader because of the um, weight of his feet trampling through the jungle. The water, well, was disqualified based on his ugliness. The rhino, too riotous, too, um, too chaotic in his um, behavior. And at that point, it's clear that there wasn't really going to be any resolution to the conflict, to the problem of who should lead us. To save the day comes the forest sage, and he says, see, for us to move forward, for us to solve this problem, we need a hybrid of habits, a combination of different qualities of different characters. And it then goes on to outline in the rest of the poem. It says, a little bit of a lion, a little bit of a lamb. So a little bit of this and that, taking a bit from here, there, and this other place, bringing it together would we'll have something or someone that is close enough to what an ideal leader should be. So tough like a tiger, compassionate like a doe, transparent like a river, mysterious like a lake. 
A leader who knows how to follow, followers mindful of their right to eat. So even if this is your first time of being in contact with the poem, you can immediately understand what it's about. You can identify how the poet has used animals and their behavior and their qualities to represent what happens in a democratic setting, in a regular society. So you can actually relate what you understand in this poem to what goes on in Nigeria, in Africa, and even the world at large. Now, these are some of the animals mentioned in the poem. The first time we looked at this, we were able to identify the animals. In picture A, we have the lion. Picture B, the impala. Picture C, the antelope. The hyena is what you have in picture D. E, the rat hug, and F, the rhino. Are we all together? Clinton, Rahima, Hanifa. So for those of you who were in the earlier classes, we've gone through all of this. We were able to consider aspects of the poet background. It was born on the 12th of March, 1947 in Ekiti, Nigeria. He is currently a lecturer in the United States. And he has won for himself a couple of awards as you can see on the slide there. So I've mentioned about the background of the poem. Now the subject matter, it's, subject matter is easy to identify. It's more or less the story. You read the poem at the, at the surface level and you, the first thing is, oh, it's a story about animals trying to choose a leader. As simple as that, that is subject matter. So now, but the poem is actually talking about issues that are deeper than that. And that's when you begin to see that, okay, the poem is trying to explore what it takes to be a leader. Um, no human is perfect. So as a result, you would always need to learn from other people. You always need to improve. You always need to do away with habits that are not that palatable or appropriate and imbibe habits that would help you succeed at whatever task it is you have before you. So that's the subject matter of the poem. Now, okay, this, I think this is our first assignment. Okay, now it's important that we understand some of the literary terms slash poetic devices that we're going to be. Um, all right, Rika, which one exactly do you want to write? Because this is a first class, you can't write everything. So, um, okay, let's see. I would try to upload this, right? So that you all can download it. Remind me, for the end of the class, I'll do that so that after the lesson, you can go back to see the video and also write. All right, Sadiq, welcome. Yes, you all will write, but not now. If you want to take down some notes or jot, you can, as I explain. And when you have questions and I answer you, you can jot down the answers to the questions but for the actual notes i'll upload this file to the group chat and before the end of the lesson you can download it to your devices any other questions all right so we move on now these are some terms that uh, quite have, these are just some of the several that you expected to know, but these are here to remind you. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, certain refers to the time and place of an event. There are different dimensions to certain, but we're going to just leave it at that for now. 
um, okay, you, you have the physical setting, you, um, you have the environmental setting, and sometimes the sociological aspect. So you might be referring to, you have the time, you have the place, and then you have the um, socioeconomic or the social angle to it. For the poem, the leader and the lead, the setting could be, well, animal kingdom, a forest. And at a deeper level, or on the other hand, it could be any democratic society. Because it is in a democratic society that you have people putting themselves forward as leaders and others deciding whether they should be the leaders or not. And that whole process, as we all know, is election. Conflict is a clash of ideas. It's not necessarily a battle or war or physical um, fight. When there are disagreeing opinions, you have a conflict. A very good example is what we have in the poem. An animal comes up, the lion comes up, the hyena comes up, and other animals put them down because of a particular quality or the other. So the major conflict is that of leadership. Who should lead? Now mood, the general atmosphere or feeling that you get from the poem. When you read the poem, you get this feeling of disagreement, chaos, confusion. And it doesn't really um, go away until the end of the poem. So you read the poem and you can just imagine the animals shouting at the top of the voices, this one saying, oh, let's vote for the rest. The hyena has um, a ravenous appetite, but he can also do this. And others say, no, the giraffe should lead. And another one says, no, his neck is too long. His eyes are too far from the ground and so on. You imagine all of those happening and you get the feeling of confusion or chaos. Now, the theme is the main idea. It will be several of them in the poem. We looked at some in the last class. A couplet is a stanza of two lines. This poem has 12 stanzas, each stanza being a couplet, in total 24 lines. So the poem, in terms of the structure, can be described as a 12 stanza couplet poem. The fable is a story about animals. There are several that you know about, and this is no different. It's, it's not a story, so to say, it's a poem. But the poem tells a story about animals choosing a leader. I mentioned imagery earlier on, and it's basically painting pictures in words. We're going to look at it and before we move on to the next topic in a few minutes. The writer, or in this case, the poet, is able to make you imagine certain situations by using the right kind of adjective. Diction is the writer's choice of language. In this case, we can say the language of the poem or the diction is simple because we don't really need the dictionary to understand. We don't really need a dictionary to understand the words used in the poem. They are simple, easy to understand everyday expressions. Antithesis refers to the use of contrasting statements. We're going to have examples of that. The, especially the last two standards of the poem are perfect examples. Sorry, the um, second to the last two. So you have a little bit of a lion, a little bit of a lamb. Then tough like a tiger, compassionate like a doe, transparent like a river, mysterious like a lake. The contrasting ideas in the statements or in the lines, you have tiger versus doe, two animals that behave very differently. Tiger is aggressive, fierce, the doe is gentle, calm, innocent. Tough and compassionate can be regarded as antonyms. So when you have the idea in the first part of the line, Tough like a tiger. 
what you have after it compassionate like you do is like the opposite of the first part so it's contrasting with tough like a tiger that poetic device is antithesis So mention the structure of the poem. If there are any questions at this point, you can please ask before we proceed. We have the some of the themes in the poem. The poetic devices and the lines which they occur. You have imagery, simile, metaphor repetition, symbolism, alliteration, antithesis. Now, this assignment should have been submitted before this lesson. Only one person submitted, and that was Rahimat. So what happened to the others? Sadiq, you were in the last class. Why didn't you submit your assignment? Demilade, you also were around in class. So yes, guys, what happened to your assignment? Yeah. Now for Rahima, who submitted, who did and submitted her assignment, it was a good effort, even though she didn't complete it in that the second question or the second part of the assignment was that you should make a list of all the adjectives used in the poem and give their meanings. You only um, wrote out, I think, four. Yeah. But well, still a good try. Yeah, you can still submit. But the thing is, uh, since you weren't in the last class, I would um, receive you. So you can submit, even though we are going to go over parts of the assignment right now. But you can still submit and you get your marks for doing your assignment. Now, the others are not responding to my question. They were in the last class, yet didn't submit. OK, and if I, yeah, I think I remember you were in the last class. OK, Sadiq, are you sure you weren't? Okay, all right. What about them, Ladi? All right, we're going to do part of the assignment together right now so that you can get um, a good idea of what you're supposed to do. Now, for number one, uh, maybe I should make the question, what devices? So have it as what devices um, does Neo Shinari use to highlight the various traits of the animals? Because depending on how you consider it, more than one device would have been used. Now, for instance, I'll give you one, and then you see if there are others that you can use. Hmm? Good. Now, I mentioned antithesis in uh, my explanation of the, um, I explained it when I was explaining the activity on the previous slides. Stanzas 12 and 13 are good examples of that antithesis. And because Neo Shuna replaces two contrasting traits beside each other, 
it's difficult for us to miss the point he's trying to make. So to make the toughness of the tiger stand out, he contrasts it with the um, gentleness or the compassionate nature of a do. Now, in the same way, for us to um, understand, even though this doesn't apply to animals, we're talking about the lake versus the um, river here, it's the same idea. In order for you to understand how different a river is from a lake, he talks about those two kinds of bodies of water in the same line. So an answer for number one of your assignment would be antithesis. There are others that he uses to highlight or to show the various traits of the animal. Even if this has been your only class, by paying attention, you would be able to pick out one or two others that he uses to talk about the behavior, for instance, of the animal or the, some of the animals or the appearances of some of the animals. So just try to tie those to one or two devices and you would have answered question one correctly. Now I'm going to do um, question two together. Now, I want three volunteers to give me to mention an adjective each in the poem. We have three minutes for that. All right, let's start with Sadiq. Sadiq, look through the poem and point out one adjective. Okay, Rahim, very good, ferocious, well done, that's correct. Yes, Rahimat has helped us out with one. Vikaya, how about you? Okay, Rahimat, just one. Thank you. That's ferocious. Okay, do not list out. Let others contribute. So, Vikaya, let's have an adjective from you. Very good, Realtors. Okay, Sadiq, you're next. Sadiq, Hanifa, Yesura. Clinton, Day Miladi. Yeah, let's have more adjectives. Okay, tough. Okay, well done. Okay. Yes, yeah, Sirot. Okay, so I think very good, mysterious, all right? Yes, others, Demilade. Yes, Sirot. You can see the poem right in front of you, right? So let's have um, other adjectives that apart from the ones mentioned. Is Dim Lattice still with us? I hope you guys are still here. I have good. Thank you, Dame Ladi. Yes. I need an adjective from you. Yes, I did. Yeah, I know you are sitting there. Yeah, I can just unmute everybody at the same time. Uh -huh. Okay, but right now, okay, let's see who hasn't um, spoken yet. Yes, sir. 
and cleansing. Okay. Yes, Ferocia, yes, Ferocia. Yeah, um, someone had mentioned Ferocia. And Lisa. Transparent. Okay, transparent. Very good. Is that the melody? Okay. Clinton. Clinton, all right. Clinton, good. Oh, yes. Compassionate. Compassionate, okay. Very good. You've given us Who else? Little. Okay, yes, good. That drudges. Mm. What do you say? I didn't hear that. I didn't get that. Trudges. The elephant trudges into the power torso. Mm, no, that is an adjective. Look at it uh, more closely, Clinton. What part of speech do you think that is? It's not an adjective. Sir? Produce isn't an adjective. Okay. Okay, so but now quickly think. What do you think it is? Look at the way it is used. The elephant trudges into the power tussle. Okay, sir. It looks like what the elephant did, right? What the elephant yes. is doing. Now. So, what part of speech would that be? Um, it should be. Um, I think. Yeah, very, very, very good. Yes. Uh -huh, yeah, you're correct. So that's a verb. Okay, Rahim, a compassionate. Okay, thank you. Trampling, good. Yeah. Now, let me let me point this out because I just trudging in the trudges is the verb. Now, even though trampling looks like the ing form of um, trample, here it is used as an adjective. So I was um, looking out for that. So that's a very good one. Trampling there is used as an adjective. So, but his colleagues read his trampling feet. Trampling qualifies, thumbs up to you. Yeah. So trampling qualifies the noun feet. Well done. But you know, right. So it's good that you all have a good picture of what we're doing. And if you isolate all of the adjectives, you would have a good idea of the um, qualities of the animals being mentioned. Yes, I did that. All right, good. So um, I've more or less helped to do your assignment. So I don't know what other excuses the rest of you would have. So, but well, I still need the assignment submitted because you've just done part of it. There are at least 12 different adjectives that you can identify. We pointed out some of them. But you also need the meanings of those adjectives. So do all of those as your assignments. Any questions before we move on? Mm. If you have any questions, you can ask now. And if the questions are from previous lessons that you're part of, fine, no problem. Let's have your question. Yeah, because we're going to be um, ending our work on this poem, at least for now, in a few minutes. So if you have some questions right now, we can take them. Or probably is a comment you have. You want to add something to what has been said or what have in this slide? Okay, yes, we can, we're done, yeah. At least for now, definitely we're going to revise it. That's um, a midsummer night's dream. We're still going to revise it, but for now we're done with it. Sir. Yeah. Sir, do we have any books we've not covered? Yes. That's what we're going on to um, right now. But I'm not sure if any of you have the book with you. Sir, what's the name? 
unexpected joy are done. Okay. Does anyone have a copy of the book? I have right now. Okay, yeah. Um, we didn't anticipate today, so um, all the copies that we have for you are at school. So we're going to try to still get some work done, even though you don't have the books right here. Um, I'll give you a brief introduction. We'll do a task on this also as an assignment, and in subsequent lessons, we'll see how we can manage without you having read the book. Any other questions? Yes, Yasura, Sadiq, Dim Ladi. So I'll mute them so they can talk. I'll mute some of them muted themselves. Okay. After let me see. Okay, I muted almost everyone the other time. Mm. Sadiq said sir. Okay, hold on, let me unmute him. <coughs> Right, Sadiq, as well as a question. All right, I don't know, for some reason, it's difficult for me to unmute the others, but... Well, anyway, if... I haven't unmuted you. You can type your question or your comment in the chat. I think I think they muted us. Yeah, that will happen. So I muted everyone. And yes, I know you don't have the text here. So we're going to start working with the book now, and we would pause until we all have the text. That we don't have the book, unexpected joy done doesn't mean. We can still learn a couple of things about it. I'm going to start um, this afternoon. Hmm? All right. Now let's pause briefly to look at the title of the book. I don't think anyone has um, read it. So let's just um, work with our previous knowledge and see what extra meaning we can bring into it. Unexpected joy at birth. What kind of story do you think we would be dealing with? It might even sound like a title of a like title of a movie you've seen, of a book you've read. I just want your ideas about this. Unexpected judge. And if you like, you can break the words in the title down. So what ideas do you have based on the title of it? Um, yes, yes. yes, Hanifa, we can ask the Clinton, the Miladi. Huh? Yeah, what ideas do you have from the title? Uh, like, are we meant to start with? Yeah, yeah, yes, you can. Um, maybe someone that wasn't expecting. Mm. expecting something. I don't know. Someone that wasn't expecting joy at the dawn. That's it, that. Dim Ladi. You know, there's a way I can send a knock to you from here. <laughs> So, but yes, you are, you are actually right, but you just read out the title to, to me. Uh, so, but let's try to put it in a different way. Yes, now, that, okay, think of the things that uh, make you joy or joyful. So, try to think of the plot of the story that you can have for that. So, uh, would it be someone who... In digging for treasure all through the night and 
if one is planning to um, find gold by morning, or someone who had been working hard at business or something, mm -hmm. just think. Oh, oh. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, let's say okay. after a heavy time on you, you just like something out of nowhere just comes. Okay, I didn't get the first part. Unexpected, no? Yeah. Like something, something surprisingly just comes from nowhere. Okay. Can you give an example? <laughs> Can you think of a quick example? Okay. Wiki is sad because she left, she, she lost um, all her, she failed her exam, then <laughs> out of nowhere, huh? she passed the exam. Okay, which name did you mention? Wiki. I said Wiki. Okay, all right. I, I, I know it's not, not our own Wiki. Yeah. Yeah, there are several others um, all over the world. Okay, but that's a good example. Yes. Yeah, but that's a good example. Yes. Rahima Rahima has, has something close to moving from grass to grace. Good. Yeah, a kind of grass to grace story. You have that um, theme in many of the novels that we read and movies that we see. Okay, Sadiq says the good thing happened to him when we were not expecting it. Good, good. Now I, I like your responses. Now, when you eventually read the book, you would find out that your answers are actually spot on. At the time when the joy unexpectedly arrives, the main character in the book is he has more or less given up on life. He's lost all hope. It's basically a story. I wanted to avoid um, telling you the story right now, but I'll just give you a little bit of it. Now, it's set in Ghana and Nigeria in the 1970s and 1980s. So, there was a proclamation, an order from the um, government of, by the government of um, Ghana, by the Ghanaian government back then, that made it illegal for non-Ghanaians, that is aliens, to remain in Ghana. So um, this main character, the um, character, the main guy, his name is Ni, was actually in Nigerian, was adopted by some Ghanaian, by a Ghanaian couple. The name was changed to that of um, a Ghanaian. And well, in spite of his name, or his, of his new name, he wasn't still regarded as a Ghanaian. So, like several others, he had to find his way back to Nigeria. So after going through a lot of hardship, his uh, wife had died, wasn't able to, wife had died, wasn't able to bury his wife. Um, he lost his job in the bank, found his way to Nigeria. It was still difficult for him to make ends meet. Now, he was also disappointed because he had felt that okay, since he was originally, he's originally Nigeria, that it would be easier for him to fit in. You know, but he realized that he didn't sound like many Nigerians. So he had to learn how to sound like the average Nigerian, how to dress like the regular Nigerian. So it was still a problem for him to fit in to the Nigerian society. So another round of suffering and hardship started and <laughs> the um, Nigerians around him found it difficult to accept him. So long story short, after going through all kinds of hardship and suffering, he um, was found by his um, by a family member and the meeting was, I don't know what other were to use other than well sudden shocking unexpected so up to that time he had no hope of uh, of survival of rescue or salvation so in those few sentences i've tried to compress what the story is about is a whole lot uh, more than that and 
much more interesting than how I said it. If you haven't get the text, you'll be able to look at some of the significant events or incidents. But it's important for you to note that there will be a lot of um, talk about identity, acceptance. Okay, it's Ghanaian is in Ghana and he says Nigeria. He comes to Nigeria, he says Ghanaian. All kinds of issues surrounding that. And so on. So, um, now the author of the text is Alex Agiagiri, Ghanaian poet, writer, and lawyer. He actually still practices law in Accra. So, and he won a couple of awards for his works. So, now, um, to help us um, get the proper background of the text, we're going to do an assignment. And I hope you can all say this. How many of you have heard of this expression before? Ghana must go. Is it, it's, it's a How many of you have heard of it? Don't don't please don't explain anything. Here. How many of you have heard of it? Yes. Ah, good, Clinton. Yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> yes. Most of the time, when you hear Ghana must go, what is being referred to? Ghana must go. Uh huh. They must go now. Eh, they must go. Okay. Why? Why should they go? And to where? That's Have you guys heard of Ghana must go bags? Yes. That is the product. Oh, that's a product. Okay. Who hasn't heard of <laughs> Ghana must go bags? Who hasn't seen one? Nobody. Oh, oh, everybody, nobody. Okay. Um, let's see. You see, it's part of your assignment. So, uh, I'm not saying you should go get me pictures of it or draw it. If you must, it's fine. Now, what you are going to do is write down your assignment. Write a short essay, not more than 200 words. About oh, the expression, yes, yeah, Ghana must go. So, about the origin. So, I want you to do your own research, matter how little it is, and come up with relevant information about this expression. It must be in an essay format. Now, I need it submitted before our next lesson on when. Ah. So, how should we submit it? Yeah, you, you, you type it, send it to my email address. Okay, I'm going to type my email address now for you. Oh yes, or oh, the NTI CSS2 um website. So you already have it. But can you show me? I don't have it. Okay, right, don't worry, you can see sent to my others have been submitting to my email address. Okay, can I see your email address? Okay, I've just sent it to you then. Okay. Oh. I'm Baba. You all have my email address now. Can you see? It? No. Okay. Yes. Yes, sir. All right. Good. Are any questions? We're ending the lesson in a couple of minutes. Do you have any questions? Okay. All right, now I just uploaded a file, a copy of um, the presentation we've been using for the past lessons and for this. So you can save it, write your note from that. Uh, yeah, you can always refer to it. Can you all see the file? Yes. All right. Only well, Clinton is answering me. Yeah. I just uploaded the file of the slide to the group chat. The leader and the lead. Well, so if there are no questions, and if we all, since we all understand our assignment, we're going to end the lesson now. So please, 
I need all of you who are in class now to submit the assignment before Wednesday. Are we clear on that? Yes, sir. All right, good. Thank you. Enjoy the rest of your day. Bye bye. And bye bye. How did you do this? How did you send me?